it is once again time to play in the weekly ESL tournament. $400 online and a lot of pro gamers. And today the theme is Battle Cruiser. I'm going to be playing Battle Cruiser builds every single game. Let's begin. Now we're not getting it easy this time because our first opponent is already going to be a mid Grandmaster Zerg. I do think Battle Cruisers in all three matchups are probably the best against Zerg. There's a bunch of openers with them. Now just to clarify the rules, obviously I am allowed to make any unit I want. The main goal here is to have the Battle Cruisers at the center of all my builds. So either it has to be an opener with BCs or... I do maybe like a transition into mass BCs later, but it has to be central in my gameplay. But besides that, I'm allowed to make anything. Now, I have been getting a little bit confused. It really feels like my settings just change every time I switch accounts. Like these random settings are just off and on. This also doesn't really look like the console I normally use. So not sure where this came from. Now, I have a few Battlecruiser builds ready against Zerg. As you guys know me, I always like variety. So I'm going to try a different Battlecruiser build every game. Now, what I would like to try here... It's because typically battle cruisers go into mech against Zerg. In case you guys didn't know, if you want to play a mech TVZ on the high level, you must open battle cruisers because there's no other counter to swarm host. Neither banshees or cyclones or anything really deal with swarm host early on. So if you want to play mech, unless you have like a weird opening prepared, maybe like something tricky like a hell battle in, you have to open with BCs. But I think this map, in general, is pretty good for early tank pushes. So I was thinking, what if I go battle cruiser into a two base all in with bio? And this is the reason why. You notice a third base is probably going to be here. There's a bridge relatively close by with really good tank spots like that. So I think it actually work. It's probably going to catch my opponent off guard. And it's a pretty good strategy for the map. So that's going to be my first try. And then we can always, no matter if it wins or, or, uh, or fails... I can try it into mech later. I also have, I think, two cheeses that involve BCs, which are both pretty sick. So no worries for that. Um, and let's just try to win this first game, first of all. I never really like losing the first game, even though it, this is a best of three, by the way. Every single match is a best of three. First to two games wins. Um, it doesn't really matter for the best of three losing the first game, but it's just kind of a rough feeling, you know? You want to keep the momentum there. You don't really want to give it away. But like, back when I was still a pro gamer, I would love to use my best build for the first game just so i would have the biggest chance of going up 1-0 and then later i would see you know how i want to continue with it now i do think i have a pretty good builder i actually like my chances i'm not quite sure the build is gonna flow well that's my biggest uh worry here like am i actually gonna have enough money to afford all the stuff now pretty good start here with the reaper getting a little free damage on those zerglings gonna be very annoying here for him it's also a pretty small map so he can't really get around this reaper Reapers are never supposed to get any kills, really, by the way. So the fact that I killed, uh, yeah, now four Zerglings, I was going to say three, is already really huge. He doesn't have a single Zergling on the map right now, which is pretty insane. Unless he somehow managed to sneak by a few, which I doubt. No third base yet on that side. Is he going to think... Hmm, okay. Hmm, I think that is a strange third base to take. It could actually be better against our strategy, though. So I'm not sure if I'm happy with it yet. Let's see if I can get some drone damage here. Oh, he's not paying attention. Oh, it was okay. Of course, I underestimated. Okay, I underestimated him there a little bit. I'll be honest, guys. It, it, did, it just didn't look like he was paying attention. You know what I mean? Oh, that's a creep tumor, though. Reaper's actually doing so much damage. Five kills on a scouting Reaper. That's insane. I mean, it's definitely not game-ending damage, but it's, it's still pretty insane. I would never say no to a five-kill Reaper. Right now, I would even be okay with losing it. Well, actually, I'm never okay with losing the Reaper, but, you know, realistically... It would be all right. Let's put it that way. I'm going to get a Viking so I can deny the Overlord and then a Fusion Core. Uh, actually, I do want to scout for Roaches with this Reaper. It's a pretty small map. And a decent weakness of Battle Cruiser builds is Roach all -ins. So I'm going to use these to scout right now. Probably go up to six Hellions and then start transitioning. Let's see, he might... Okay, he does have a few links now. So he is going to deny me the scouting, which sucks. Maybe I'll just pretend to run by and then scout. That's a pretty decent plan here. Okay, let's see. Oh, yeah, this actually looks pretty nice. He actually uh, bought my distraction, and I'm going to be able to get a scout. There's no gases, and that's going to be super nice for us. There we go. That's exactly what I needed. Now, that Reaper dying at that point doesn't matter. I couldn't have escaped with it anyway, uh, but I did get all the info I needed. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have built that reactor. Uh, yeah, I need to cancel it. That's a little bit of a mistake there. I forgot I still needed to start the battle cruiser. So, you know, that cost me, what is that? Maybe like 13 gas or so. So as you can see, it's going to start a little bit later. 
Still decent the end time though, I would say. Not the biggest deal. And then... Stim first always makes sense because you always make them make combat shields after. But like Stim is one of those upgrades you really can't delay because you make Stim and then you make combat shields. Uh, so if you delay Stim, you basically delay everything, your entire timing. Um, and that's never what you want. You can't really attack either without Stim or without combat shields. Like both of them uh, are kind of ridiculous. So I do need to get that reactor going though. Really a good time to make my extra barracks already. There's some creep. I don't really like how this early game has uh, panned out for us. Like, obviously, you know, it's not like I've done an insane amount of damage, but I distracted him. I think I was annoying. Probably forced to make him, him to make a few extra links after I killed his initial four. Getting a good amount of creep as well. And that's important for this push because normally it doesn't matter that much. But here, I really want to be able to siege on these locations for free. Like, without being able to be surrounded by creep, pretty much. Um, oh, he's gonna see this battle cruiser perhaps i'll just teleport it right away i get that going there probably yeah he does have a spore it's actually a little bit out of position which is really nice so i'll be able to do a good amount of damage here i think like even killing a few queens is pretty cool because he's still not moving the spore crawler that's a massive mistake he needs to move that spore guys why is the spore crawler not moving i mean i know the queens are on the way but he's gonna take a lot of unnecessary damage from this oh i do need to fly out now though kill two queens wait this is eight kills did I kill six drones with that? There's no way, right? I thought I killed like two queens and three drones. Did I maybe kill like a zergling or something that I didn't see? I hope I did, else that's even more damage uh, than I thought for him. Now, he did kind of get a read on my base. I think his overlord saw an extra barracks, which normally isn't weird. But in combination with the battle cruiser, it is pretty suspicious. So, I do think my strategy is given away now. But maybe I've done enough damage to still be able to continue with this push. Let me actually try to clear the final creep here as well. Probably clear, clear a few of these. I can use the Hellenes for this one. There we go. Now this front area is still completely creepless. So that's really nice. Overseer is coming in. So he knows I'm playing bio 100%. I'm not sure. That's a changeling. There you go. I'm not sure if he has the presence of mind to realize I'm doing a two base all in though. Because sometimes those kind of blend in a little bit. Like maybe he's just like, oh crap, he's playing bio, you know, and he's not paying attention to anything else. So in that case, it would be pretty good for me. Now, I don't have my combat shields yet, but those sieges are usually pretty slow. And I think it's quite likely I'll have it by the time we actually fight. Now, let me use my medevac to pick up these tanks. Get him in really good positions here would be nice. He's probably morphing Bailing somewhere. I don't know where, but he's morphing them somewhere. Uh, I'm going to use the Banner Cruiser and the Hellions to do damage. Yeah, so there are the Bailings. I'm going to spread these Marines all the way in the back. So I can get a really nice... Wait, he's going for it already. That is... That would be very crazy. I think I'm actually going to drop a mule here to repair this Banner Cruiser. Um, because it just... It looks a little bit sad right there. Oh, he's going for it. That's pretty alright for me, I think. Look, I'm going to kill a lot of units for a really good trade here. Um, he did kill the tank, though, so that's pretty good for him. But was it worth it? I'm not sure. Let's see. I like how this BC is following, being repaired by, uh, you know, one mule pretty much, and that's it. Now, the tank doing a good amount of damage from far. Wait, that mule is still alive somehow. I don't know how. The battle cruiser is also still alive. And I think I have enough units here. Little bit of splitting... That bailing barely hit, but I'm able to surround his queens now. This is actually an insane fight. His Ling re Oh, no. I think I blocked myself in. Yeah. Oh, I forgot I raised that depot. I was just F2-ing there. I do think we've won this fight convincing enough. Now, I think I've made two mistakes here. First of all, I locked my army in, which is obviously pretty bad. You know, I think we can all see that. Um, second of all, I made a few too many medevacs. It's usually a problem. I think I have eight medevacs right now. But obviously, you don't need that many. Oh, he's going to chase me. That's not a great idea with all these medevacs. Unless he has really good upgrades. No, I don't think he does. There we go. And now, this army is actually freaking massive. If I reinforced with this earlier, I would have won instantly after the attack, I think. Now, he might still have some amount of banings to push me back. But I really doubt he's going to have enough here. Going to do some pre-splits. Always try to pre-split and not do it during the fight. Because then you're going to mess up. And then you can just do some reactive splits after that. Just like that. And I know, I know it's more complicated than I'm making it sound. Don't worry about it. And there we go. First Battlecruiser is a success. Six, what is it? No, a nine-minute victory against the Grandmaster Zerg. Not going to complain about this at all, I think. I made some mistakes here and there, but it was a warm-up game, so it's fine. Units lost is about double. Now let's move on to game number two.
Now here's game number two, Data C. It's a big map. And I think we actually have two options here. Or actually I have three options. I could go for a CC first into a really fast double battle cruiser rush. I could also go for the classic BC into mech style on this map. I think it should be pretty strong. Maybe you could even go into ghost from there. Or I could go for a really cool proxy battle cruiser strategy. I, I do think that the cheesy strategies are definitely risky and since we won the last game pretty convincingly this is always a little bit of tournament mind games going on right if you win a game really convincingly the chance your opponent cheese in the next game gets a bit higher because it's a very mental game like starcraft 2 is very taxing what tends to happen after they lose a game is that their brain just goes like man we, we, we can't win like it doesn't matter what they blame they could be like this player's too good that's a rare one they could be like Terran is too good <laughs> right something like that but whatever it's more likely that they cheese so i think i should play a more solid opener so I'm gonna go for battle cruiser into mech and then I'll save my cheesy strategies for later could be game three if we lo lose could be another series keep in mind this is a pretty big tournament I think I need to beat like how many opponents do I need to beat to win this maybe like seven six or seven or so I believe uh, I think it's six six sounds about right seven sounds like a lot so you know a lot of builds to use a lot of builds to hide of course now this one is actually not being streamed I'm recording it but no one is streaming it so my builds are going to be safe anyway but I still think going for a solid BC into mech is going to be the better choice here now I was actually but I'm not kidding before we started vetoing that's how that's how tournaments work by the way you play against an opponent you veto the maps that you don't like and then you play on the ones that that are left I was really hoping he would leave in the mouse with a gold base because I had a really cool idea where I could play CC first on the gold or maybe like on the map with the rich gas and do like an absurd battle cruiser rush cheese. Uh, but he actually vetoed both the maps with golds in them. So I'm not quite going to be able to use that strategy, but maybe once again in another series. There's a normal overlord. Let's see if it's a hatch first. Those look like a hatch first. So at least no early signs of cheese. The most common cheese that Zergs do is actually... It's a build that looks completely normal. So they'll go for a hatch first. They'll go for a third hatch. And then they sneakily add two gases. And then they go for like a late Ravager Ling attack. It's probably the best Zerg cheese there is, I want to say. Uh, and that's the most common one. So despite be being a hatch first, we're not going to be sure that we're not going to get all in later. Another Zergling kill. Wow, this is just perfect. Another really good Reaper here. Wait, did he only make... Okay, I was going to say. Did he only make two Zerglings? Yeah. Oh, I should have killed that. That was a bad target fire by me. There we go. Another Zergling kill. That's three down. Now we're going to start a third command center. Let's see. Third hatch. Same timing as last game, I believe. I feel like normally it would be a little bit further ahead. But maybe that is just this build. Or maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> it's also very possible. I'm also not always right, guys. Believe me. I know sometimes you guys might think I am. But I am also wrong sometimes. Um, let's see. Well, I mean, it's a pretty normal time to hatch anyway. I feel like either way, if it's late... It's not absurdly late, so there's no reason for me to panic at all. And now I just need to make sure to keep this Reaper alive. The reason why I do moves like this is because it's a little bit distracting. Might take a little bit of his APM. Maybe he'll, you know, get supply blocked for a few seconds or something. Those are the things you're hoping for with moves like that. Do need to get a third gas going. Can't forget that I'm actually playing a Battlecruiser opener here. And now I'm going to park my Reaper safely on the top side. Probably send these here. I could... Probably, yeah, the over is going back. I could probably go for the straight fusion core in this situation. It's probably a little bit smarter. Now let's try to jump into the natural. Try to spot for those two gases that I mentioned earlier. And there we go. He is taking both gases. So his build is actually going to be the Ravager all in. But now mind games are going to come into effect even more. Because he, he knows that I'm good enough to spot the signs of that all in, right? And I spotted it so early that for him it's perfectly reasonable to cancel both gases. It's it's gonna cost him barely any minerals and, and that's it, right? Or he could go for the double mind game and still attack me. Uh, I'm gonna be safe anyway. So I'm gonna do a little bit of a technique that I want to teach you guys at the same time. If you play Battlecruiser build against Zerg and you want to be safe, what you can do is this. You can start a Banshee. And then closer to when your fusion core is going to finish, you go for a secondary scout. And if you notice your opponent is actually not going for the roach attack, you can cancel the Banshee and just start the battle cruiser. So let's see. If I had to guess, he probably canceled. Oh no, he's actually going for it. Yeah, there you go. So I'm just going to finish that one. Um, 
I'm gonna wall this off with an engineering bay, I think. I could consider going a little bit harder on the defense here. I think I'm just gonna start my factories, though. I'm gonna make a second banshee, and then I'll start up the battle cruiser. I'm actually gonna get the Yamato already, and then I'll get the battle cruiser after this. Or maybe I can actually kill those zerglings if he's. No, unfortunate. Now, there's a few more micro things you have to do. You have to target the, the value targets with the Banshee. You can't really waste your attacks on Zerglings. And I'm actually surprised that he's still going for her, but maybe he thought... Ah, he doesn't realize what's going on. He's trying to buy all my Banshee. He actually killed one of his own units instead, which is pretty nice for us. And I have to make sure to keep targeting the Ravagers. Ooh, can't let that die, of course. Really good amount of damage being done by these Hellions as well. Now, I'm going to actually consider... Uh, or I'm going to go for the main base. And the main reason I'm doing... Wait, what are my helis doing? Uh, and the main reason is that he has more units than normal. So I feel like it's actually quite committed what he's doing. I like that he's still trying to buy all the Banshees. Um, right now, I think I should be able to start my uh, my battle cruisers already. This is going to be perfectly fine. And also, I just have enough helis to defend this. I think he might even GG here, to be honest, because this attack was incredibly committed. And there we go. Uh, didn't really get to make a battle cruiser, but obviously it didn't really have a choice here. Uh, I mean, I, I did start making it, but I was actually supply blocked. My bad. I told you guys, I'm wrong sometimes. I get supply blocked. Anyway, this was a very nice first series. 975 against 3.2. And I believe our next opponent waiting is a Grandmaster Protoss. Going to be very tough, but let's do it. Cosmic Sapphire, game one of the second best of three against Aztecs, the Protoss. Now, this map, actually, Batacruz are usually not that good against Protoss, and I don't have that many BC strategies. But from my Sky Terror to GM series, I actually learned something about this map. This map is the map where battle cruisers look the best by far against Protoss because there's so much dead space between every base that you can just kind of teleport so many battle cruisers across and keep them there forever. And now I do have the advantage compared to my Sky Terran to Gem series because I can actually make a few tanks to defend myself. Though it is a pretty hard balance to find because if I make... Let's say I start committing to making 10 tanks at home plus a planetary. All of a sudden, I don't have gas for that many battle cruisers anymore. So, do I even want to make tanks? The answer is definitely yes, but I don't know how many. I think probably one per base or so should be pretty good. But we're gonna have to see. Obviously, it all depends on my opponent's strategy as well. If my opponent decides to take the gold or something crazy, I might have to do a strategy that's a little bit more drastic. Try to get in there fast. But if not, I'm just going to stick to the strategy. Really try to go for mass BCs here. I'll probably play something like 1-1-1. One, 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 you know, one barracks, one factory, one starport. And then maybe go into four extra starports. Like, I don't think I even want to add any other barracks or factories. Because I do think it's a momentum-based thing, you know. Like, if I go for mass BCs later, Protoss has a really good answer for them with Tempest. Uh, which is pretty hard to get around. So, I think just going for it as fast as possible is probably the right idea. Now, there's some different variations I can do here. For example, I could go for Banshees first. So if he doesn't go for Stargate, I can, you know, force him to keep his observers at home, not scout, and then suddenly mess him up with some battle cruisers. Or I could really just rush into it, of course. I can also maybe do some kind of tank push at the third while teleporting the BC in the main, kind of accompanying my push and giving a little bit of a double threat. Now, his probe was a bit risky, so now he's probably just gonna lose that probe. Ooh, he actually reminded me that I forgot my depot. That's kind of nice of him, to be honest. <laughs> there we go, guys. He's even assist- Ooh, he's not expanding, though. Okay, I see. Gonna have to be careful here. Now, let me just check if he has a second gas. Okay, he doesn't have a second gas. That's important. This looks like a proxy two gate, maybe. Um, like full zealots. That's most likely what's going on here gonna have to make a factory instantly this is the kind of game where i could even end up going for something like a one base battle cruiser now i have to make the bunker there so i can defend the follow-up stalkers and then oh i actually have a sick idea check this out guys this is gonna be very cool not sure if it's gonna work but it's gonna be cool anyway and swag is important oh we actually showed up with four zealots Ooh, that's something i didn't expect i'm not sure if i can i don't think i can save this one actually oh maybe like this no i can't pop out there Oh, that is unfortunate. Please? Oh, I think it was a cool idea what I tried to do. But the execution... Or, well, to be honest, it's RNG. I, I was about to blame myself, but not much I can do about the RNG there, to be honest. So, it is what it is. But the really cool idea that I had was that I could... Check this out. 
on the right side of the map, there's rich gas bases. I could actually try and fly over there and kind of give him the feeling that he's going to be containing me. But I'm actually just mining from a rich gas. Now, this strategy does 100% bank on me just winning with the BCs, right? If he ever finds that base, I'm probably totally screwed. So, wouldn't exactly call it a smart strategy, but it's an interesting one for sure. Let's see. He definitely already has the Nexus by now. If not, he might have taken the gold base. Okay. Um, I could either check his main. Yeah, I'm going to check his main. I could also just go straight for the gold. There's a robo being built now. Uh, I can't imagine that he also has the gold. He does have a lot of freaking stalkers, by the way. That is pretty scary to go up against. Um, he's not going to have blink. That's important to notice, right? But like usually if you see stalkers you kind of just assume there's blink as well but since he started the robo he's not gonna have blink anytime soon now should i actually go for that rich gas or not you guys know me i'm very tempted he's actually following me on accident let me just see if he actually has the gold does not have the gold that's what i expected if he had the gold there too his build would be freaking insane maybe i can kind of catch him off guard with this siege here let's see now i think i'm just gonna expand here and then maybe I'm going to sneak out another SCV to go towards the gold. I think... Wait, he recalled? What? Did, I have no idea what I did that warranted a recall, honestly. <laughs> like, I actually... Did I, did my, you know, my marine sitting on my ramp look so threatening? Or I'm, I'm not quite sure what that was about. But I guess it's going to allow me to actually push across the map, which is nice. And as you can see, I'm being a little bit greedy here. Ooh, here we go. I'm being a little bit greedy here. Um, I'm going to probably take the extra gases oh there's actually a little bit of an annoying spot here he could be attacking me from behind let's take these he did warp in something i hope it wasn't here because if it was here that means it's dts and that's always problematic Ooh, maybe a little bit of miss micro from him i can probably micro this tank well enough to actually pick up a lot of stalkers unseached tanks are surprisingly sick by the way you'd be if you never used them you would actually be surprised by how good they are um Oh, wait, no, what are you doing? You have to stay there. I think I accidentally moved it back. I, I did forget about that a little bit. I was panicking a little bit, to be honest. I don't even remember what I was panicking about, but I forgot something, and that always makes me feel a little bit awkward. But I, I guess I'm just going to go and continue. Maybe it's better to take the one on his side. I feel like that's a little bit less obvious. It's also crazier, but it's also a little bit less obvious, so that's what I'm going to go for. And I'm going to make a few more tanks. I wonder what he's going to do from that robo first. Like, if he attacks me with a prism, for example, that is pretty dangerous. Oh, I can't transfer any SCVs there. That's the biggest problem. Uh, let me just see. Okay, oh, this is actually... This is the best possible builder for me, guys. He's going for... He might die to a battlecruiser. Like, he actually could. If he has stalkers at home, he's going to defend it. But he's going to take damage. And we're going to be able to take the initiative here, which is just fantastic. If there's no blink, uh, these are really hard to deal with. Let's see what he's actually going to come up with here. So the stalker, yeah, there we go. He's adding the Twilight Council so you know he doesn't have one. And that is just an absolutely brutal start here. Activating the battery overcharge to keep his probes alive. I mean, it's a good move. Uh, it's still very, very painful for him, though. His stalkers were on the, on the middle of the map somewhere, you can tell. There they are. Finally, they show up. But 10 kills already on this BC. And this was massive. Let's get Yamato as well. And since he doesn't have blink, I can even stick around super long. I can even just, like, target one stalker. Just like that. Okay. Oh, no. Don't stop shooting your own gas, please. Wait, that tank is not in range of that? Oh, my goodness. I swear, tanks just don't have range when they're mine. I I've been saying this for ages, guys, but it's true. If someone uses tanks against me, they shoot me from the other side of the planet, you know? But if I have tanks, they don't even cover the back of the mineral line. This one... Even that, it doesn't cover... I mean, it's actually shocking. My tanks need to be buffed. Not all tanks, just mine. That's all I have to say. Now, he's moving his stalkers here so I can teleport the next BC back into that base. Uh, and that's going to be a really big struggle for him. He's going to lose every single probe there. Maybe with this one, I can actually... Oh, he does have the third base. Okay. I was out of vision for that for a while. He killed a lot of my SCVs, by the way. That's pretty crazy. Now, this one, I'm going to teleport it back after killing that probe. 10 kills on that BC as well. We're really kind of bringing it to each other here. He's owning me with a single Colossus drop. I'm owning him with a few battlecruisers. Oh, no, he lost the... Oh, that is actually mass... No, where are you going? Sometimes SCVs, they have no brain scars. It's definitely not me, by the way. Like, normally you would think a StarCraft unit is not doing, you know, what it's supposed to be doing. It must be the owner, but in this case, my SCVs are just revolting against me. 
Now, I do have this beautiful, uh, rich gas here. So, I already have six gas saturated. And my opponent doesn't realize it, which is really nice. They're going to try to kill a few more pro. I don't think Blink is done yet. Blink is a long upgrade. Very, very long upgrade. Let's get two more starports now. Probably a decent moment to consider getting uh, armories as well for upgrades. PCs benefit greatly from actually having extra upgrades. Now I think Blink might be finished, or at least it's getting closer. Let's get those armories. Throw down a Yamato. Boom, there we go. And maybe if I have two BCs, I can actually go across the map again. At this point, especially with the Colossus going down, I would say we're in a good spot. Maybe with this Battlecruiser, I can give it a go, get like a nice push going. Let's see, this one, it does actually have teleport, which is nice. Let's blink it in that same spot. And I'm actually going to send all my tanks across the map. Try to get some good damage. And let's see what these BCs can do as well. Okay, so he has blink on these 100%, I want to say. Uh, there we go. Get some Yamatos. And then this BC... Dude, he's actually getting... This, this strategy just works like every time on this map. It's actually just pretty crazy. It's just... It's so hard to deal with if you don't have like... Oh, can he blink it out? Yeah, there we go. Exactly what I'm talking about. It's so hard to deal with if you don't have a Stargate. It's just super, super powerful. And I only learned this because of Sky Terran 2 Grandmaster, by the way. <laughs> if that show didn't exist, I would never have known about this. So, what did he recall? It's the probes, right? I would have to guess. He recalled the probes there. Let's get back into his main base. He's gonna follow me. And then I'll be able to... Uh, push into his natural with my main army here. Oh, well, I'm not even sure if this army is necessarily stronger than my battle cruisers, but I guess that is kind of my main army. Let's see. He's probably gonna try blink on top. That's gonna be a little bit of a disaster for him because tanks are very good against stalkers. And this strategy has worked out absolutely perfectly. I'm not even sure how much I lost this game. Yeah. Oh, it's actually very, very little. 1,700 against 18 or 8,000, 8, rather. I was going to say 1,800, but no, 8,000. That's, what is that? Almost five times the resources lost. Absolutely incredible. 73 workers against 25. Three PCs left. Don't, wait, I, I did lose one just now, I think, right? Because I think with this one, no, I repaired this one. And I was, yeah, okay. Actually, I don't think I lost a single battle cruiser here. I might be wrong, but I think I was actually very clutch about it. He probably was a little bit annoyed seeing this. Look at the gas I'm mining, a thousand gas a minute. And this one wasn't even up yet. Beautiful strategy. Let's move on to game number two. Game two is on Moondance. I actually, after the game, I realized I hosted the games in the wrong order. Moondance was actually supposed to be map one and Cosmic supposed to be map two. In the end, it doesn't really matter, I don't think, since it's the first two games. Maybe if you mix up the third game, that could be actually a little bit of a problem for a series and it might warrant um, a, a rematch because sometimes, let's say the map you host in the third one on accident is your opponent's best chance to win then he might feel scammed by not having that chance to win in the first two games, right? But in this case, uh, we mixed up map one and two, which is totally fine. Now, this map, it's definitely not as good for BCs. There, as you can see, there's no uh, dead space behind the main there. You can actually reach that with stalkers. So here, I'm going to have to do a little bit of a different approach. Uh, okay, we're being harassed, I, I think. Uh, I'm not quite sure what, I what else this is supposed to be. It looks like we're being harassed here. Uh, or maybe even can a rush. I'm not actually sure. Oh, he's going to lose that pro probably. This doesn't really look like a proper can a rush to me. Um, and also, yeah, he's going to lose one probe already. That is rough. Yeah, he canceled the pylon. And now I think all I have to do is switch these. And if he kept that probe alive, it would have been decent. But losing that second probe means his very committed harassment is now pretty much in shambles. So that's nice for us it sucks for him if you guys wonder what the point of that was is probes recharge shields uh for free and scvs have to repair so what you can do with that is just infinitely harass the barracks scv and then run away and recharge shields uh the fact that he's not coming back now and that he lost one probe is really really bad for him so uh i would you know i wouldn't say we have a massive lead but we definitely have a lead that you should never have from something as silly like that in the first minute of the game but it's nice for us I do still have to scout, by the way. I need to keep in mind, he did cheese us in the last game. So, probably don't want him to get away with any overly cheesy stuff. Let me just check here for proxies. 
It's actually a pretty popular map to do a proxy stargate on. They like to build it here behind your base. And then the void ray just like directly... Yeah, exactly. The, fly, the void ray just directly flies into your main base from there with shield batteries and is very painful. Now, he's also making a pylon here. I... I'm getting the feeling he's getting confused in his own strategy a little bit. Because that was his third pylon. It looked like he was already planning to make that pylon at home. So he has two gates. This, this strategy is doing absolutely insane. This looks like something I'm going to do in my speedrunning SC2 uh, series. Um, he was going to go... He was distracting me with two probes. So he could make two gates and chrono adepts across. Because I would forget to scout. And then he was going to make something here. Which was most likely a robo. To ferry units into my main with a prism. That's that's all I can guess. Besides that, your guess is as good as mine. I have no idea. But it was going to be something absolutely insane. Now, the fact that we scouted a 2-gate is really big. It can still be pretty annoying. Actually, I love the fact he's using this strategy on this map. For one pretty simple reason. Um, and that reason is that on this map... Let me show you guys after I make my orbital. On this map, you have a base here, right? And you would think, what the hell does that have to do with anything? But the point is, normally, there's no space in the natural to shade adepts. But on this map, you can 100% shade your adepts past the Terran base. Because you have all this space to maneuver in. So if you go mass adepts, they will always find value. Just because there's this space you can always hide in. That's kind of like in between slash next to the main and natural. Um, he hasn't shown any adepts yet. Which makes me think he decided to go for some other kind of tech. Or he just tried to fake me out, hope I would cancel my natural and expand it behind it. But that seems like a little bit of a desperate play, if I'm honest. I'm still going to go for the fusion core, of course. I do need to know what he's up to, because I could easily get busted open by um, an immortal, I would say, for example. Or maybe like DTs are also pretty scary here. Normally, I wouldn't send out an extra SCV, but after everything that's happened, we're in a pretty good spot. And... Uh, I can afford to scout a little bit extra, I want to say. Also, I have this third gas for the batter cruiser. Now, in this game, I'm going for a slightly different strategy. I'm actually aiming to do a fast tank push here. Last game, I attacked with like five tanks later on. Here, I want to go... Okay, so he's just playing normal behind it. Um, this game, I'm going to go for a fast tank push. I want to teleport one BC in his main and hit at the same time as the first BC at the front. And I feel like it can be a really deadly maneuver. Now, this could still be something crazy like DTs, though. So, I need to, yeah, keep my eyes open, really. He's going to see my siege tank now. If he was paying attention, he might have seen that I was mining from this gas. And believe it or not, that is actually a pretty big tell. A Terran is not supposed to have a third gas that fast, I believe. Um, maybe if everything was perfect in the early game, without being harassed or anything, without scouting, maybe I could have it. But he should definitely be a little bit suspicious if he saw that that SCV was mining gas over there. Now it looks like I'm going to be attacking with two siege tanks, which is okay. I'm going to make an eBay just so I don't get owned by, you know, 3DTs walking into my base. I feel like we've, if you ever played StarCraft, we've all been there. Some Dark Templars walking into your base. You have no detection. It's a very sad moment to be a StarCraft player. That's for sure that happens to you. Now I'm going to pull a few SCVs as well to make this a little bit stronger. Five seems like a decent amount. I feel like 5 is not too committal, but it makes my push a decent amount stronger. I can make bunkers and stuff like that in his bases. Now, I didn't see an observer, but I feel like there should definitely be an observer somewhere around. Now, let's get this bad boy into the main. Let's see. Now, I saw an observer here. There we go. And the battle cruiser is going to be destroying the main already. Now, he has to choose. He can either defend the main or the natural. Looks like he's going for the natural because his main is just getting absolutely ripped apart right now. By a couple siege tanks. Probably can keep reinforcing here as well. He does have the battery there. Which is pretty crazy. He activated it already. Uh, that activation is actually not that good. Because I wasn't even close. Now it looks like he's going for this battle cruiser. Because his stalkers are absent. So I will just move it back. He does have the back base. So that's a little bit scary. Let's start a few bunkers here. Get this tank moved up a little bit closer. He's coming back again, so I'm just going to move away as well. And he's actually giving me a lot of space now to just go into the natural. Uh, obviously, this is an insanely difficult situation for him. Every time he goes back, I move farther up. And it's really hard for him to deal with. Battlecruiser is going to terrorize the main. Just need to make sure to keep covering my siege tanks as well. He also has this third base over here, so that's where I'm headed next. And then he's probably going to try to blink after it. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm just going to teleport my next BC into there. 
I, think, I don't think he has enough stalkers there to kill it, actually. Oh, no, he does. But I have my teleport again, so there's nothing to worry about. I mean, at this point, I'm just in the main base. This PC is not even going to die. This one I'm going to save. I'm going to launch a mule here. I'm trying to launch this as far away from his army so he doesn't think it's a manor mule. <laughs> Basically. If you guys are wondering why I landed it this far, it should be illegal. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a pretty big compliment, you know. Is my build that good? It should be illegal? Yeah, I I'll take it. Units lost even more disgusting in this game. 500 against 3725. This series might have been the strongest battlecruiser I've ever looked against Protoss, to be honest. Like, this was actually gross. Very happy with this, but we're not done yet. Our next opponent in the cup is going to be rank 4 European player Lambo, a really good Zerg player. I'm scared, but let's do our best. Data C, game number one. Definitely going to be the hardest match so far by a really big margin, but I have some ideas in mind. Now, first of all, Lambo is a good enough of a player that I think I need to take a lot of risk with this. I don't think I'm really going to win in like a super straight up mass BC game or something like that. Uh, mass BC also just not that good against Zerg. I think the cheesy builds are probably actually stronger too. So what I think I'm going to do is do an old build that I used to do. I think I... I have better... How do I explain this? I have better memories of it than you know what the facts actually are i guess uh, i think i lost a few times with it in tournaments but i did win like some ladder games with it some le less important games uh, and i always thought the build had potential it was really cool i just need to be lucky enough that it works out for me so uh you know we'll see how it goes i'm just gonna try my best and see what happens that is always the best uh, mindset to enter a tournament with so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to go for a proxy starport. This is already really rare against Zerg. And I kind of like it because Zergs typically play in a certain pattern. Like Zerg play, I talk about it a, a lot, I think. Or not a lot, but just, I've mentioned it a few times. Zerg play at the best level is pretty much just following the exact same pattern. Zerg play is figured out and Zergs know if they survive the early game without taking damage, they're always going to be ahead. They'll be able to be greedy enough and you're going to be in a little bit of a rough spot. So I like to do builds that are so out of meta that they don't check for it, basically. And Proxy Starport is weird enough that I, I really think it falls in that category. So I need to pay a very close attention to where the overlords are. I did actually play Lambo the day before this on ladder. So I kind of know, actually I did. A, I, I was trying to do a proxy factory that game, which was a little bit too stupid and it failed completely. But I kind of remember the way his overlords went. And I think he sent one in this direction and the other one was down here somewhere. So I think if I build a starport on the left side, uh, he might not check for it. Now, I'm always scared that my SUV gets spotted by an overlord. Like one thing I don't really know is when like the third overlord spawns or something like that you know that is just i i would have absolutely no idea uh, i'm not even sure oh there it is um now he did see my scv movement there uh i'm a little bit scared like really good players always notice those small things he saw my scv jittered a little bit i tried to fake the movement but if he paid attention there he's probably gonna know that my scv went up here okay there is the third base i was wondering i actually thought he was gonna take the other one but there we go. Let's do a little bit of damage to the links. I mostly want to keep this Reaper alive to be annoying. I, I already arrived a little bit late because I went for the third base first into, uh, instead of the natural. So I'm not really going to be able to do any damage here. Now let me fix that saturation real quick. And now I need to make a Marine instantly. Um, like, when a Zerg is this good, I kind of know exactly what they're going to scout for. He's probably going to sacrifice an Overlord pretty soon to see what add-on is on my buildings and if I made a third CC or not. And that's why I need this Marine, just so I can fend off the Overlord. And yeah, he already scouted here. He Now he knows that there's no third CC, at least. The Starport could have been somewhere else, but at least he knows I have no third CC because it would have been here somewhere, most likely. Um, now he sees the Marine. I need to be careful with the movement on these Hellions as well. Um, actually, I could maybe make the Fusion Core my main. I was going to make it here, but at the proxy location, I mean, but it might actually be smarter to make it in my main instead. And I go f oh no, well, that was actually automatic. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I executed my build so perfectly, I automatically made it in the location where I didn't want to make it anymore. So now he's going to scout my main. Um, he, yeah, this is really good overlord positioning by him, by the way. He's going to know there's an overlord or a, a Hellion drop here coming. That is actually super well done by him. 
I thought there wasn't going to be another overlord here, but he did see it, so that's unfortunate for me. I'm not sure how many... Oh, he doesn't actually have Zergling speed yet. That could... Oh, it, it actually finished as I said it. That could potentially be annoying. I'm just going to go into the natural, I guess. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of Zerglings. So I can actually do a little bit of damage here. I might lose this Overlord or the... So I keep uh, messing up my words this game. I might lose my Medivac. I'm actually just going to keep it there for a while. It's probably the best course of action. Now, I did get a decent amount of drones. Like, I would, I would call this a successful opener. Um, it's not successful yet because I'm also doing the Battlecruiser. And the Battlecruiser is yet to do damage, right? I'm actually going to put these here. Uh, I think I need to distract him at least, else I'm just not going to be doing enough here. So that's why I moved in. And now behind it, I think I'm definitely going to go for a bio. Let's see if I can catch his drones. I thought maybe they would be moving back at that point. That would have been beautiful. Oh, that was actually pretty close. Okay, that could have been huge. Now let's get a third CC. And now I'm going to be playing bio behind it. Because playing mech from this is probably a little bit crazy like i don't even have the gas required for it really so <laughs> it's probably even a little bit too oh nothing is too insane for me to be honest but it's a little bit insane and i think bio is just gonna feel a bit nicer now yeah he found my starport of course he's gonna kill the tecla which i honestly don't really care about that much i do know that his links are out of position so i can do even more damage here maybe i can actually target these uh, not too much damage down there unfortunately he did have a few more links finishing that sucks for me Oh, that's a nice lineup, though. I think I killed, like, six more drones there already, which is really, really nice. Um, maybe I can get another shot off. Not really. And then I'm actually going to put my starport somewhere there. Get my double eBay. Um, I don't really want to fly my starport all the way back home. So I'm going to try to hide it in a place like that. Let's see. Yeah, I figured he was going to have... Well, this is the, the advantage of proxying the starport. You can fly in the BC... And then when you've taken too much damage, you can actually just teleport it back. So you can kind of like just sacrifice freely for drones, knowing that you are going to get out no matter what. Unless you mess it up really heavily. Like I think now I already have to get out. Cool, that was actually a lot of queens. I'm happy I dipped at that point. Maybe uh, a braver Terran would have stayed, but a braver Terran also might have lost all the... All the you know, the marbles there in that battlecruiser. Obviously, without that battlecruiser, my entire build is pretty much useless. Now, this is a very risky start positioning to take. I just really want to try to actually hit some kind of a timing. Else, I just don't feel like I have anything here. Um, the extra gases make me think he might want to go into Mutalisk play. Which is very good on this map, admittedly. So, that would make sense. And I think, personally, I'm going to go for kind of a... Yeah, I wouldn't call it an all-in, but I'm going to go for a relatively all-in strategy. I'm going to try to win uh, without going into the macro game, hoping that my early attacks did enough damage. And then I can then finish them off with, you know, 8 barracks, mass marine tank, uh, no fourth base behind it, no ghost transition or anything like that. I also think on, on this map, playing the late game is really hard as Terran, so... Um, I was probably going to do this strategy anyway as a follow-up to what I did. But on this specific map, I also think it really makes sense to, you know, not macro too hard pretty much. Now, I only have 59 SCVs. Normally, you're supposed to have probably at least 66 here. So that probably tells you guys how all in I am. I'm just teleporting it here to try and get more drones. It really looks like he's going for Mutalisk with all these gases. Probably can start a few uh, turrets and stuff already. There we go. Does he have more than 9 queens? Normally they make 9 queens. This really feels like he has more like 12 or something. Um, I wonder if he may... Oh, that is annoying. I wonder if he maybe thought that I was going to go for a double port battlecruiser. Like kind of like mass BC as a follow-up. That would make sense. Now, do I have my... My combat is actually going to finish at a pretty good timing. I, I didn't expect to have a decent timing here. But this actually does not look that bad. Maybe I should go for the creep. He is morphing banelings. Might mean that he is also setting up a counterattack at the same time. Maybe not yet, but he could. So I'm going to take it a little bit slower. Oh, I didn't get an armory actually. So I don't have, um, you know, I'm... How do you call this? The requirements. Sorry, I couldn't find the word. The requirements to get plus two attack. That's very unfortunate. And yeah, it is indeed mutilus play like I expected. Now, I do have turrets up and stuff, so that's going to be all right. 
It's also sending something back. Oh, this is actually a pretty nice trader. Oh, it sucks that I teleported on accident and it was stimmed. I was trying to stim my marines, but instead uh, I ended up teleporting. It's the same hotkey. So if you have them on the same hotkey, then uh, you're, yeah, that happens sometimes. But it's okay. What sucks the most here is that I'm forced to do damage because I forgot my armory. That is really a pretty big deal. Okay, let me make sure to grab this medevac. Try to get uh, a good position here. This position actually does look pretty good. Maybe I can actually get a little bit closer even. Okay. He's coming from the back too. My army's pretty big here though. This does not look like an easy, easy wipe for him as soon as I... As long as I micro, I should say. Battlecruiser stays alive somehow? Actually gonna drop some meals there for that. Not sure if he has more bailings. Good Zergs always have more bailings, but... It did kind of seem like he uh, went with everything. Well, let me try to reinforce... Okay, so we got a fourth base, which is nice. Battlecruiser's getting repaired, which is nice. Zergs do reinforce very fast, and that's why I kind of have to wait for my own reinforcements here, though. If I don't do that, I might still get wiped off the map. And then, let's see. He is the, he's taking the base, but he doesn't have it yet. That's, that's important. I'm going to send all those marines back. To maybe try and defend that. If the mutas are here, my battlecruiser is going to be very good on the other side of the map, too. That is something to remember. Like, normally you would think the Battlecruiser doesn't have much point anymore, right? But here? Uh, maybe they actually still do. Let's see how much... How many, he does have a good amount of bailings. That is scary. Let me try to get the tanks in the right position here. Oh, this position is quite good for the siege tanks, I have to say. Surprisingly good, perhaps. Oh, I do need to reinforce. I do not have enough marines here, I don't think. I need to be very careful with this. Oh, this position looks quite nice, though, I do have to say. He didn't use all the bailings at the start, so all I have to do is some splitties. The Battlecruiser is still alive, I think. Oh, he does have a lot of Mutalis, though. More than I thought. I did save the Battlecruiser. I do, I do think that Mutalis count is starting to spell GG slowly. If you want to play a long game against Mutas, you, you do really need to transition into a better army. So the fact he has that many is... Yeah, that's very scary. Maybe if I had 2-2 here, I would feel a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, the fact that he has that many... He didn't really expect it either, to be honest. Just suddenly saw, like, an extra 10 Mutalisk appear, it felt like. Yeah. I could go to the middle of the map. It's always pretty dangerous to do that, though. Oh, nice. Actually gonna get some damage here on those. Oh, that's very nice. I didn't even try to surround him. It just kind of happened. <laughs> I mean, we take those, right? Okay, that's already a few of the Mutas gone. That's very nice. And maybe 2-2 two -two is gonna finish. I saw a bunch of links there. Oh, no, it's the Mutalisk. Okay. So he actually... I guess he finally knows where my starport is now. That sucks for us. But it is what it is. I'm just gonna rally here. Don't wanna die to any more counter-attack shenanigans. Let's see if I can get these in position again. Okay. Oh, that sucks for us. Oh, actually, it doesn't really suck for us, I don't think. As long as I micro properly. I didn't micro properly yet. This micro is decent. Uh, I really should have done better there, to be honest, but... Uh, let's try to get these unseeds as well. Doesn't have that many bailings left. That's why I'm pressing so hard. Zerg attacks always come in waves. If they're out of bailings, you can always fight really well. If they have bailings, you cannot fight at all. I need to make sure to spread these as well. Keep splitting. You guys like splitty, so you're probably enjoying this little bit of TVZ action. Okay. Oh, not the best splits ever. I think it might be barely good enough here. Let's see, these are 2-2 two -two marines. Yeah, the mutas are gonna fall down, and that is usually the sign of it. And there we go. Very close game, I want to say. But game number one with the BC strategy was a success. I actually didn't really think we did enough damage with that opener, but apparently we did. Let's just quickly check. Um, I'm not gonna take you guys too long. I don't want to keep game two from you guys. But I just want to see roughly what the situation was here. So, 66 works, or is that 68? I can't even tell, against 56. Upgrades are started for me, but not yet for him, but he has the Spire. I would say it actually looks relatively normal. Um, maybe we're slightly behind because I don't have the third yet. We're definitely not ahead. So next time we need to do a bit more damage. But the fact we won from this position is reassuring. Let's go for game number two. Inside and out, game number two. I'm going to try the same strategy. I think 
it was the first game in this entire video, maybe the first or second game that we played on this map. And I'm gonna do the same strategy, mostly because I'm very curious how how it looks against a really good Zerg, right? Because we beat Hino with it, who is a mid grandmaster, which is obviously very good. But there is, you know, a really big difference between being a top pro in the EU and a mid grandmaster Zerg. And I would love to see how it looks against Lambo. Am I gonna get absolutely crushed? Is it actually a hopeful strategy? That's what I want to know here. Now, I think I could do something different. I maybe could play gas first instead of racks first. Uh, does it work? Actually, I think the last build worked out fine, right? I don't think I really have to change anything. I'm just going to try the same build. Next time we can perhaps make an adaptation if we have to. Uh, but for now, let's stick to what we know. I don't think the build flowed well enough. I think I played one Viking and six Hellions, right? So that sounds like something I can repeat. Reaper is going to be pretty effective here. Now, I do expect Lambo to take this base. The triangle base is the most common one for Zerks to take, I think. Okay, keep in mind, guys, since I'm uh, not a competing as a pro anymore, sometimes I lose touch of meta a little bit. Like, obviously, I'm always going to know the meta pretty well, but some details like that, whether they take, they take that third base, sorry, that third base or this one, uh, you know, I might be confused at that, but I think this is the normal one to take, uh, but I guess we'll see. I think it also maybe depends on how often Terrans do two base all ins because this one seems a little bit less comfortable to take uh, when you're going up against a very fast tank push. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm just going to be scouting. Um, trying to think if there's anything I need to pay attention to in particular. I know Lambo usually has a Rochelin up his sleeve. He does definitely like to deviate a little bit and... You know, try something crazy to throw you off in the best of three. So that's something you have to pay attention to. And like I mentioned earlier in this video, if you play BCs, road challenges are pretty scary. Okay, so he went for pool first. This doesn't necessarily indicate a cheese. Oh, I'm not actually going to get a scout off. Oh, that really sucks. That means I have to go across with my Reaper and take the risk of getting owned at home a little bit. So that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, but this doesn't usually have to indicate a cheese. It can also mean he just wanted to be safe against a proxy Rax. And since he killed that SCV so easily, that's a little bit unfortunate because now I have to make an extra marine before the reactor. But at least we're going to be safe and scout whether there's a Roach Warren or not. And that is pretty nice in itself. He doesn't have a crazy amount of gas, so this is just a macro pool first, looks like. We're going to be safe with that grenade, I think. Yeah, there we go. And all the damage we took is that I had to make an extra marine, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not much more than that, really. Probably save this as well. There we go deny the scout and all in all it's a little bit annoying for me as you guys can see i'm basically gonna miss out on one heli and i believe because uh, my reactor is not going to be finished but i have two marines i will be able to deny the overlord a little bit easier and i don't think it was really that bad for me after all unless that one missing heli is going to bite me uh later on in like a heli versus link battle i think it's probably going to be okay here Let's try to switch these. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll probably just move across. It's, you know, I always follow my own patterns. The most standard pattern for moving out Hellions is, for example, you move out with two, then you save the next two in case of a Ling run by, and then you move out again with six. But I don't really have the book on what you do if you make one Hellion instead of two, you know? But I guess you just move out anyway. So here we go. We're going to go for a batter cruiser as well, obviously. Uh, if you guys have been watching this video for the past few games, you know what's up. And let's just see what he's doing here. I'm, I think I'm gonna go for a rescout of the Reaper. It might be a little bit... Yeah, it's actually a little bit late because I have to go all the way around, which is annoying. But then again, it's not the end of the world. I'm trying to get Stim on this. There was an Overlord here somewhere. I sadly didn't pay well enough attention. Oh, there it is. Okay, that's perfect. We're gonna be able to kill that instantly. Um, I'm gonna pretend to make more Hellions. I want to lift off this factory. But uh, I'm going to play the mind games a little bit here and pretend to make more Hellions with that. Something that sucks a little bit is I want to move out with my Hellions, but I also don't want to reveal my strategy here, right? So that's a little bit annoying. Now let's go for the Reaper Scout. See if there's gases here. Probably not if I had to guess. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything mining gas. So that's perfectly fine for us. And now we're going to be able to make that BC. Started getting my extra barracks, and it's looking pretty alright. Now I need to keep the uh, denying creep in the middle, but so far he did a pretty good job of just shoving his queens there like that, so I couldn't actually reach it. That is uh, exactly what you're supposed to do as Zerg, and he's doing a good job of it. 
I'm getting my extra barracks. Should have sent this Viking across a little bit faster. Can't have it all, really. Um, I also need to keep in mind that if I focus so hard on clearing the creep here, it might be a little bit obvious. So he has three queens on each side. Very much a normal setup for this. And I'm just going to go for two more barracks now. Yeah, that seems to be right. Two more barracks now. And I'll take the extra gas after. Go to about 47 SCVs. Because then I'll have everything saturated while my SCVs are building stuff. Pretty much. Now, that's always something you need to keep in mind with Terran. You know, 44 workers is technically a saturated base. But with Terran you always have a bunch of guys making uh, buildings and whatnot. Oh, there's nothing there. He does have... Um, a lair already. So that at least means we're gonna get scouted pretty soon, I would think. There we go. I did lose a Hellion, I think. And also, I haven't really been able to deny creep in the middle, which is a little bit annoying. Oh, should I get extra react? Maybe I can get these queens, actually. If there's no queens back up on the way, I can kill the... Ah, okay. I knew it. There's always queen back up, guys. Can't believe I fell for it. There's always queen back up. Now maybe I can try to deny the creep. Maybe if I connect my two pieces, I can uh, deny the creep a little bit better. Right now, I think he's going to realize I'm going for a two base attack because he saw a single engineering bay and the wall off. So that is a crucial scout for him. I think right now he's going to start making units like crazy. And then we just need to hope that I somehow break through with really good tank positioning through the creep. It's hard to see it work uh, after his successful scout there with the Zergling. But, uh, but who knows, honestly. Anything can happen. I think my plus one is going to come online very soon. And then I'm going to repair this battle cruiser. I really wonder what the lair means. Like, was he actually going to go for really fast Butalis this time? Or was it... I don't know. Maybe he just wanted to scout an Overseer and then ended up not doing it. Because he already scouted with, you know, the, the Zergling. I guess we'll find out. He's going to see me move out now, which is fine. Because I'm... I'm convinced that he already knows what's going on here, so I don't have to really hide it anymore. I could actually... Oh, wait. I need to be careful. Let's see. How much does he have there? It's a few units. It's not an absurd amount of units, for sure. But it's definitely a few. Okay, so he's going for... Oh, no. I did it again. But this fight actually looks decent. I don't have combat shields yet, though. That's the biggest problem. Um, yeah, I need to wait for that. Ah, oh, it's 15 more seconds. I really thought it was, like, about to finish. But it's actually 15 more seconds. Um, my supply is looking alright. Probably could start making some liberators now, really. See, I'll probably send the battle cruiser there. There we go. Okay. He has a lot of queens, yeah, again. Let's see. I wonder if I can just fight this at this point. Maybe I'll make a second thingy. He's yeah, he's losing the queens here. This is actually really nice. Okay, I think I killed a few queens. It's not absurd, but I killed a few. Let's open this because it looks like he might be going for a counter attack. Put them in really good locations here. Oh, I need to be careful with that. That looks like a really strong counter attack. Exactly. I saw him coming. Okay. Oh, he's actually going forward with everything. But oh, this is actually a really crazy fight. I think I'm about to get crushed here. Ah, oh, I needed like a little bit more space. He just had enough. Ah, okay, yeah, this is just way too much. Now we know, guys. The build does not work against Pro Zerg. It's pretty obvious. I think... Let me, let me just look at it real quick. Um, could I have done anything better? I mean, I'm actually not quite sure about it. I could have played it even more patiently. But if you look at the income here, 3.2k minerals against 1800. Doesn't quite seem like a right idea. So I think the push probably hits a little bit too late. If you see what he has, 34 Baylings, 67 Zerglings. Yeah, this looks like a pretty easy wipe for him. I think if somehow you can deny all the creep here so I can actually siege up without really the possibility of being surrounded easily, there's definitely a chance. Um, but here, not much of a chance, really. I had to keep these units at home because I can't always see where his units are. If they walk into my natural, I die. So I think he played it perfectly and my strategy just fell short, which is okay. Let's move on to game number three. Game number three on Moon Dance. Now, what I'm wondering here is does he think I'm just being like cheesy and weird or does he realize I'm actually making battle cruises every game you know it's so, sometimes you don't really know if people are making the distinction there because he could also just be expecting 
a proxy two rex for example you could be expecting a really fast hell battle in but in reality i have to do something bad or cruiser related now i have a really really crazy build in mind and i i kind of feel like i might have done it against him before in a far past but uh excuse me the build I had in mind was to go for Battlecruiser into double Thor drop. And I know that sounds absolutely ridiculous, but if he doesn't play Roaches, Thor drops with Hellbats can actually hit pretty hard. And the Battlecruiser is basically just going to be a massive tank for the Queen Shots. It's going to take, I don't know how many Queen Shots, probably like 80 or something. It's going to take a lot of Queen Shots uh, while my Thors and Hellbats are going to do the work. Now I could also do something a little bit different, like maybe a battlecruiser with a faster hellbed attack but with how many queens he has been building i think i need a unit that can actually break queens and just a naked hellbed attack like that is not going to do the job i'll need some big boys like thors though <laughs> i'm obviously wondering you guys know me i'm obviously wondering if there's maybe some version of penguin brother battlecruiser hellbed attack that i can do if you guys don't know what penguin brothers are because you're relatively new to the channel then uh, it's basically viking hellbath uh, which is my favorite hellbath attack personally uh, so i'm kind of wondering if i can sneak all of that in one build vikings hellbaths a battlecruiser and a thor drop that definitely sounds like a little bit too much but i wouldn't be me if i didn't try i, I do think i'm gonna go for Thor drops, maybe without the Vikings, unless it somehow fits in the build. But the problem is, if you do Thor drops, you need the unit that drops the Thors, right? Which is the Metavax, which means I wouldn't be able to make Vikings. Now we're playing against a pool first again. Okay, make sure to click on the minerals this time so I can count the gas. So he has 100 gas mined, um, which means I'm probably going to end up canceling this command center. And that is usually what you do against the 100 gas version. Uh, and it's also just completely fine to do that. Now, his drone is moving out. I'm actually... I don't think I'm going to cancel the command center yet until the Zerglings show up. Um, but he did have a 100 gas mine, which is very suspicious. No Roach Warren, of course. I uh, just want to have to see if, you know, the links come at any point. Yeah, the problem is that even, like, six links would cancel this because a Reaper cannot beat six links with speed. I think even four links would cancel it, but then I can pull my SCVs. Now, he's not coming yet with links, which is actually... A little bit suspicious here. This command center is going to finish, which makes his build pretty bad. <laughs> I can't put it any other way. That's uh, not the greatest start for him to mine 100 gas and then not actually deny the CC. But I guess we'll take it, guys. That is pretty nice. Let's make sure I actually get everything on its place. So he's taking a third base. He's just playing like uh, maybe even like a little bit safer than last game. So my theory was correct. He hasn't put the pieces together that I'm being cheesy. Um... Or that I'm making battle cruisers, he just thinks I'm being cheesy, right? That's why he is playing a build like that. I think it was mostly meant to deter a proxy Rax. If it wasn't that, uh, then I don't know what it <laughs> was supposed to be, to be honest. Um, now my CC is about to finish. I'm gonna go for... I feel like this build needs a third command center. I don't think it works on two bases. Well, I mean, challenge accepted, right? Now I'm gonna lose the Reaper. That definitely sucks. Losing the Reaper here means that I have to send out the Hellions uh, because else I can't scout and then I will just die to some roaches walking into my base which would be a little bit sad so I do need to send these out to scout uh, let's see what I can find hey a creep tuber haven't killed one of those in ages feels like so that's nice uh, let's see if I can get another one on this side <laughs> let's see any no roach warren in the wall at least okay sometimes they just build it right there uh, can I yeah, the battle cruiser. No, I definitely. I was gonna. I was thinking, can I afford extra Thors or something, or extra factories already? But I can't even really make a battle cruiser yet. So, uh, yeah, I think I just have to play this with a third CC. Um, it's always best to play with your resources. So here, if I would have to choose between making extra factories and just my third as normal, then you would always choose the third base. Now he has some queens here. I could have clicked into the natural there because he was a little bit out of position. But he did have a few links, so I didn't want to gamble it. Now, these marines definitely need to stay here. I'm mostly afraid that I'm going to get spotted by an overseer and it's going to make my build a little bit too weak. I already need to add my factories now. Do I want to hit with the Thor drop? Let's see, anything else I can deny? This queen movement, as expected, very good. It's really hard to deny creep again. Now you guys can see how much of a pain it is to deny creep against the best Zergs. They just split off their queens perfectly somehow. And <laughs> they're always defending their freaking creep on every angle. 
Probably even here. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I, I can get that one. Let's go. We got a tour, guys. That's huge. <laughs> We're insane. Oh, there's an overdrive in my base. Oh, that is rough. He's going to see the fusion. Oh, that's a really sick angle. He's going to see the fusion core and the double factory. And I think now he's instantly going to make a roach warren and basically kill our entire plan. That is pretty rough. Um, I'm not even sure where I want to teleport with this battle cruiser at this point. Let's see. I'm going to send all my Hellions out. Maybe I can get a really good fight with the Queens at the front. Oh, I even forgot my armory, actually. I just realized. Okay. Then we're just going to have to play mech here. That's unfortunate. Um, I won't be able to make Thors. And that does suck. Let's see. I'll just teleport it here. And then I'll try to... Ooh! That looks like a decent hit for me, actually. Let's see. Target that one with all the transfuses. Decent trade there. Uh, on the Zerglings, but not quite enough. Okay. Maybe I can actually go for something crazy different. Uh, another build I like to do, and I think I'm literally the only person ever that <laughs> did this strategy, but I tried... I think I tried this against Raynor um, to do mech drops, right? So outside of Thor drop, just straight up drop like, you know, four tanks and a bunch of Hellbats in someone's base, basically. Uh, and I think that's probably what I'm going to do here. Because if I don't go for that strategy, I don't know how else I can transition out of this setup. I only made one BC, which is really bad if he goes for Swarm Host, and I know he likes to. Um, and I was too late to go for Thor Drop, so there's not many options here. Obviously, like I said, he went for Roaches, which is also uh, another reason for me to not play Thor Drops. He would have just died to Roaches for free, pretty much. And no one wants to see that. Let's see. Maybe I can hit a kind of timing with four siege tanks like this is the most absurd timing ever like it actually like this <laughs> i feel like i'm inventing really crazy stuff on the spot but you never know guys you honestly never know come here please no not that way i can't believe you took a longer route than initially um now i guess i just have to add a few more factions actually i'm gonna start my upgrades first because why not and then i'll just hope that somehow this four freaking tank timing uh, another one of those timings I made up on the spot is just going to be really deadly, I guess. Now, he doesn't really have a whole lot, to be fair. Maybe because he's making Swarm Host. Who knows? Let's see. Okay, there we go. <laughs> this is such a ridiculous thing. It might actually kind of work as well. Now, this is one of the coolest builds I've ever done, probably. I'm really afraid that Swarm Host are going to pop out at some point, though. That would be terrifying. I was probably making Ravagers if I had to guess it. Yeah, there you go. Ravage and, and Corruptors as well. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is the problem. These units are now all destined to die. These units cannot live any longer. Uh, I'm doing a good job targeting firing the Ravagers here. Actually getting on top of them with some of these Hellbats as well, which is really nice. I'll uh, maybe split off the Hellbats. Not sure where exactly the army is defending. Let's see. Okay. Oh, I'll just drop one in case. Uh, actually, it's probably better than not dropping one, right? Maybe I can even kill some drones with this one. Pick off one of these. I mean, the damage here was decent. I'm I'm definitely really far behind now. Like, if I had to, you know, look at this game objectively, I would say that we have lost this match at this point. But I'm definitely still going to try. Don't want it to be, uh, you know, who knows? What if we have 5% of a chance? Might as well give it a shot, right? Uh, we did kill one of his bases, which is, which is, you know, it's not the craziest damage ever, but it's pretty nice. And now I'm actually going to switch into playing my Cyclone style. So normally you play Tank Thor, kind of, and then you eventually go into Ghost. I prefer to play it a little bit more funky and get Cyclone Hellion. Maybe get some Liberators at some point. Just crazy stuff like that uh, is always pretty fun. I can also just keep doing Hellbat drops. That's pretty nice. So you're going to get in here, do some damage. Probably not too much because I imagine this army is just like right nearby. But a little bit of damage is nice. I think I got like, maybe like seven drones or so. Not bad at all. Can always be worse. I'm going to just keep... Oh, that, not you. I mean, dropping it one tank is... It's pretty cool, but it's probably not the most effective thing ever. So I think I'm going to skip on that one. So we got a few of these command centers now. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking. He might just be attacking me and then there's not that much I can do against it, right? If I, um, you know, try to take a base at the same time. There we go. I need to get some of these on the high ground. These cycles are going to do fantastic here, by the way. Like, I have more cycles on the high ground. He can't really engage this. So this is all perfectly fine by me. 
And now I'm gonna send in some more harassment. And now these have blue flames, so now they're very strong. There we go. I'm just gonna hold position these here, so they can't really be easily killed at all. And then, how many SCVs do I have now? 82. That's quite good. That's actually a pretty decent economy here. Sadly, that actually died pretty easily. Oh, they're already here. Gonna have to dodge the biles and then teleport away. I thought all that harassment was gonna do a little bit better, to be honest. So that's a little bit disappointing. Let's try to get some turrets up for the corruptors, of course. And, hmm... What is the next step here? I think I might actually want to get Liberate to range. I'm really playing this old school, by the way. This is not a style you can see anymore. Cyclone Liberator. I've always thought it was cool. It, it fell out of fashion because it's a little bit weak. Uh, but still, I think it's always fun to play uh, those styles that are a little bit outdated. Uh, I think I grabbed a few SCVs that I didn't want to grab because that was a lot in my selection. Let's see, what do I have here? Can I move out with this army? It just it looks like a very small army that I have. I mean it's it's not small, it's just it's Cyclone Heli in which it just dies to units. <laughs> so I can get infinite value by doing stuff like this though. So that is kind of the goal here. Maybe I can move out with the rest of these as well. Try to get a little bit of a high ground here would be nice. Make some factories. He doesn't have uh, investors yet, so I can actually still get trades, which is nice. Now my tanks are coming. I'm pretty close to max. The biggest thing with this is, is I can never um, actually take a fight. Like, I need to be careful that I don't accidentally fight, basically. Because if you fight, you will die with this. Um, oh, there's actually a lot of corruptors in my base. But I'm... Actually, a lot of cycles are finishing, so this is really not that bad for me of a trade. I'm just gonna try to kill my command center, but that's probably not gonna work. Okay. Need to be very... Oh, now he doesn't have investor. Really good... Uh, that actually moved away those uh, units there. So the, si the thingies are all going to die, which is nice. Oh, he does have a lot of investors here. Going to have to fall back from this. Battlecruiser is dead, looks like. Yep. And okay, here we go. Just going to saturate my base then. If against the investors, you can't really trade anymore. So I'm just going to take it a little bit easy. I do want to keep playing with this composition. I do need to edit it a little bit or modify it a little bit because this way I'm just going to get smashed by the... Yeah, more than anything by just the uh, fungals. Forgot the word for fungals there for a second. So I try to kill this as well. And then I want to send out a bunch of Hellions to the bottom. Just so I can get some free drones and stuff. Like Hellions obviously not going to do that much with my army. But if they're used like this... Oh, he does He does have... Uh, I can tell he has burrowed investors around here somewhere. Uh, that's what I need to be scared of. He's probably just waiting to fungal my army. So I'm going to have to split these beforehand. Get some more liberators. Yeah, I, 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 there, I know there's investors. I don't know where they are, but I know they're there. Let's see, I'm just going to use these then. And then send in these Hellions for like a nice little... Oh, need to be very careful. Hellions are here. That's nice. Oh, actually, got some units with that Liberator. Didn't think they were going to be useful, but... There we go. Always get as many drones as you can when you're playing mech. Mech has such nice harassment tools that you should really just be, like, dishing them out the entire game, basically. You never want to stop sending units when you're playing mech. Oh, that's actually a good amount of free units here. We take those. Okay. Gotta keep splitting. Ba the ba Actually, the fungals didn't really get anything done. Neither did the Bainings. That's pretty fantastic. Okay. Actually, I can just get all of these, I think. There we go. Oh, yeah, actually... No, I didn't get that Infester. That's crazy. How did that Infester survive there? That's pretty insane. I guess I'll just send more and more Hellions to the bottom. Probably siege these here, just like prematurely. There we go. The Infester's unburrowed. But the Liberators are sieged already. The Cycles are pretty well split. And this doesn't look like such bad of a fight to me. Even gonna get a few units on the exit here, which is nice. One of my factories is just chilling here for some reason. Uh, you're, you're allowed to contribute. Don't worry about it. Mr. Uh, Mr. Factory. Let's see, there's actually nothing here. Oh, no. Oh, I wasn't actually... Okay, we got out. I didn't want to fight there, so that was unfortunate. Now, I still have this liberty. This planet there is actually... I'm going to be able to shoot the Bailings here. Look at that. Bunch of Bailings going down for free. Oh, I did bring my Hellions back on accident, I believe. That's unfortunate. Maybe I can get some free trades. Yeah, the biggest problem is just the burrowed infester. Like, I can't really... Oh, I'm actually gonna get one infester there. Okay. 
I, mean, I did get my... Yeah, for a second I was like, wait, I did get my mag field, right? Uh, that would have been a little bit of a tragedy. I'm just going to send those there. Send a couple of Hellions to the bottom. And try to expand a little bit more. Maybe get like some Liberator Seeds over here. Well, the Banelings are pretty big. I think he has, might have had too many Banelings. No, it looks like we're still okay. All right. I just don't want to lose the base, right? If I don't lose the base, it's fine. Uh, but losing the base would be a little bit tragic. Let's see if I can land here. Okay. Base is still alive. Gonna kill a bunch of drones, looks like. That's nice. I do need some more stuff attacking the left side of the map, though. And I feel like the trades haven't really been that favorable. I'm still trying to play my style, but it's getting harder and harder to do it at this point. Maybe I can send another Liberator to the top, perhaps. Let's see. I could also make a few tanks, but I, I don't really like playing tanks for the reason that they just... They slow down the game a lot, and that's not the kind of game I want to be playing right now. Uh, not really, at least. Okay. Siege that base would be nice. Okay, gotta be careful here. Now he's gonna go for a bust on the planetary. Uh, which is gonna work, because I just don't have the army to defend it. Liberator is doing a decent job, though. So that is at least pretty nice. Liberator's doing all right. Eight kills on a lib action. I mean, I didn't even realize there were drones there, to be honest. Okay. Can we kill that army? I feel like we might be able to kill that army. It doesn't look like a huge army anyway. But at this point, I don't have economy yet. So I, I do think he has successfully broken us. Not 100% sure yet, but it's definitely looking pretty rough here. Oh, that's going to be a bunch of free units though. So that is nice. Maybe I can seize my Liberators here. Get the remainder of those units. I need a CC up here. There we go. This one can come. What's he going to do now? Now he's going to break that one. If he breaks that one, we might have a chance. And the reason is that... He also hasn't been mining like too crazy of an amount. So if he wastes like more resources trying to kill a base... Then we might actually have a shot here. Which would be pretty nice. I'm going to make a turret here just in case of more burrowed infestors. I'm just going to put a few tanks on, like, defensive spots. I could have done it earlier. I'm mostly just doing it now because now we're actually in a position where I feel like I can't win anymore unless I slow the game down. So here we go. Get a few of these drones, maybe. I mean, if I kill a few, I'm already pretty happy. You see, he's not mining right now. Might even get, like, almost all of them. Let's see. No, I actually did pretty much get all of them. I think there was one more left. Can I go one hit here? No, I can't. Sadly, not that. Oh, these Hellbats actually doing a really good job there. Uh, against the... Yeah, pretty much everything. So now he's trying to use Neurals. I have a this is maybe not the best fight ever for him, though. I really thought this fight was going to go better for him than it did. Looks like it's still enough, but it's actually pretty close. There's no Infestors left here. Last Infestors are going to die. Or, well, the last Ravagers are going to die. Oh, that was actually a crazy fight. Now, how much... Ah, 60 workers only, though. If I had a few more workers, this would actually look decent, I think. But with the worker count I have now, it just looks a little bit tragic. How many, how many kills does this PF have? Does it have 12 kills? Uh, that's nothing crazy. Could could be worse, though. Let's put it that way. It could definitely be worse. But finally, I broke the Ravager ball of his army, which is fantastic. Do need to be careful. Like, a, a bunch of links would kill this army, right? So, need to be very, very careful here. I would love to kill that base in the top right or... Something like that. I need, I need like a little bit of a victory anyway, I guess, is the, the way I can put it. Like, Zerg can replenish drones really fast, so I can only imagine he's probably up at 100 drones or close to 100 drones. Let's see. Yeah, his army looks pretty massive anyway. All right, it's going to be a GG. Well played to him. 179 supply, but he had no bank. So the game was actually pretty close. I think if I maybe try to saturate this base instead of this one, it could have worked. Obviously, like I said, my style is out of fashion. I think for how weak this style is perceived, we did a fantastic job against the, you know, what is he? What did I say? Rank for European player, right? I think we did a fantastic job. Um, it was a very close game. Maybe if I played a little bit more towards the legit style by making more siege tanks and making it slow and getting ghosts, maybe we had a better shot. But it was really fun to see this style in action again. And all in all, I think it was a fantastic episode. I decided to do a really long episode again instead of cutting into parts because I know there are some of you that really like long episodes. So if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. Obviously, make sure to like the video if you're still here. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all for the next one. Adios.